Hello everybody and welcome back to Ars Trains. My name's Corey and in today's video, as you can see, we're doing something pretty different from what I normally do. We're not in the train cave nor are we rail fanning or visiting any railroad. We're in my backyard today and as you can see, I brought out some railroad lanterns from my train collection and I thought what would make a fun video would be to light these things on up for y'all because when going through YouTube recently, I haven't seen many people talk kind of about their collections or at least light up their railroad lanterns. Sure, everyone in the train hobby, we all love railroad lanterns and we love to collect them and all, but I don't see too often people lighting them up. I'd rather just see them kind of quiet and dormant sitting in a basement. So I thought what better than to bring some of these fellas out and light them up for y'all in today's video, as well as go over the little history of all these lanterns and kind of show you how they're all the same yet how they're all kind of different just as a quick safety note before we start today's video obviously for young viewers or just viewers at home in general please be very careful in what you are doing if you don't quite know how to light a railroad lantern or anything like that please do not recreate anything you see in today's video because you are using dangerous materials like lamp oil and a lighter and all that to get these things sewing so just as a quick safety reminder please be very cautious in what you are doing and if you don't quite know what you're doing when lighting railroad lanterns just sit back and watch these ones light up for your own safety and entertainment. All right, going from left to right, we first start off with my early 1920s Adams and Westlake Co. Delaware and Hudson Railroad Lantern. Now this I got here from a family friend and it's been an absolute favorite uh, in my collection because not only is it D&H, but just because of all the cool history it has. Imagine if this guy alone could speak. Who knows, it may have went right by my house or right by some of the local towns here in upstate New York. But anyways, we go from the D&H Lantern all the way to here, my Pennsylvania Railroad caboose lantern this would hang on right in the back of a caboose there'd be two of these usually this one i found at an antique store not too long ago and i just thought it was too cool not to get so little did i know though that it actually has all the mechanisms inside that you need to fire it up so this is going to be an awesome piece to see light up tonight she's not in too good a shape she's been repainted and the metal is kind of a little eh on it but still either way it's such a really cool piece of the collection i thought y'all would really enjoy seeing it and anyways the next lantern we have is my deets new york new haven and hartford railroad lantern if i'd have to age this i'd probably say this is 1930s around there i'm sure if i have any railroad lantern experts in the comments below you probably know immediately what era lantern this is but this is a super cool lantern i can't exactly remember where i got it from but it's also been another favorite in my collection because it looks super dang original. It's never been painted over anything, little to no rust, so it's in excellent condition, and I thought it'd be really fun to fire up for tonight. And then finally, we have my very first railroad lantern ever. I got this at an antique store in Balsam Spa, New York. It's a later Ada Lake, probably maybe late 1940s, 1950s, I believe. Again, I'm not an expert on any of all this stuff, but this here is a nickel plate railroad lantern, and it has a really cool red globe on it. This is the type of globe like this one here that can be seen for quite a distance. So anyways, we'll be firing up all four of these fellas just shortly starting from left to right, the same order as they are right now. But anyways, let's get moving on with just right. that. Starting off first again is the Delaware and Hudson Railroad Lantern. Now, this fella is pretty relatively simple to start off. All you got to do is pop the top open like that. I'm just going to reach the lighter up and down inside and give me a little more on the wick there. So it'll be a nice smooth burn. It's really hard to reach into this thing because we have it really high up on the concrete wall. And I'm just going to light up that inside like that. Pop the top closed. And let's take the wick down a little because it is burning a little, a little long right there. But yeah, otherwise that, there's your railroad lantern. You got to let the flame kind of slow down a little because right now it's really wanting to bounce all over the place but this here is kind of what the dnh lantern looks like all lit up and it doesn't help me too much that this is a very old school railroad lantern and it is very windy out today because the wind is trying to come down in here and blow the flame out but this is just a little look of what the dnh lantern looks all lit up you kind of have to adjust the wick a little to get the flame burning right and this is kind of a sweating lantern 
uh, as you can see the globe is already kind of fogged up but coming in a little closer you can still see it looks pretty nice and after a little while once the flame burns some of that sweating on the side goes away and funny enough when the flame goes out you think like oh man that must be a really dirty globe but as you saw just a few moments ago it wasn't that dirty at all once the flame goes out it gets nice and clean again but anyways this is what the lantern looks like all lit up you can control the wick going up a little more gets you a big tall flame then going down a little bit gets you a nice short frame so yeah Alrighty, the next lantern, the caboose lantern, is much easier to light up. All you have to do, quite literally, is just pop open the front like this, and then I'm just going to bring the wick up just a little, just because we don't need too much, but just a healthy amount to get us going. And I'm going to light her up, just like that. And then just get that wick up a little more, just to get a nice healthy flame right about there. Then just pop that top closed. And there you go. Now the thing is, you can't quite see it, especially where I'm standing. You got to get right down in front of the globe to see it. Now it's pretty cool though, because you can see this from a very far distance. We're definitely going to light these fellows up at night and you guys will really be able to see how far this lantern shines. So yeah, anyways, we'll move on to the next one. That's it for the Penzi. All right, we already lit up the next one for your convenience. This here is the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Dietz lantern all lit up. A lot like the DNH one, these two both kind of get a little bit of a foggy glow, but either way, they still look super, super cool when lit up and kind of have a very flickering flame. Right, finally, the last lantern we have to light up is the nickel plate one, and like the DNH one, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is pop open the top and light, just as so. Again, it's a little hard to see because you guys can't really see inside like I can. Once I do that, just pop that top close and be very careful where you're touching because you'd hate to get the flame on your hands. And just like so, I'm going to bring down the wick because I can see the flame going through the top a little. And there you go. Here's all your lanterns lit up. And now, not all these lamps are perfect burners. The New Haven burned out pretty quickly because she needs a new wick. But the nickel plate lantern looks absolutely awesome. I love seeing that red globe light up. The caboose lantern is super cool, especially once you get to the right angle like this here. You'd be able to see that for quite a far distance. That's the way the lens was designed. And then the DNH one here is a little foggy on the top, but she's still burning pretty smooth though for her being over 100 years old. So anyways... Let's see what these lanterns look like at night, because I'm sure that would look really dang cool. So again, we got the nickel plate at night. She looks lovely. Nice slow burn. And we got the DNH. Very poppy flame. A little bit of a foggy uh, globe, but still looks really cool. And then the Penzi Caboose Lantern. Wow, has it been awesome lighting these things up or what? They look so cool, especially in the night. So anyways, yeah, that's that, folks. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. It's been awesome lighting these things up and bringing these pieces of railroad history back to life. I very much enjoy doing this. It's always so much fun doing kind of unique videos like this outside the box, I guess you could say. And yeah not much else more you can say it's just the railroad lantern but anyways i hope you all enjoyed today's video if you did make sure you smash that like button if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on my future videos especially ones that'll be going over the train collection and all you can start to see the fireflies around <laughs> that'd be a really cool picture but yeah anyways i'll see y'all in the next video slash live stream slash whatever i do so stay tuned Bye bye